Okay, hi. Uh, this my name is Mitch Weisberg. I'm here really representing 3D Bear and who else? Yeah, I'm Mary Alice Curran with the Digital Citizenship Institute. And I'm Derek Larson I'm with Washington County School District. Washington so County where? School District in Southern Utah. And we're both in Utah right now. We are currently in St. George, Utah right now. And Mary Ellen, I know Mary Alice, I know that you're with the Digital Citizenship Institute. What does the Digital Citizenship Institute do? You know, we work with communities around the world trying to change the narrative around technology and social media use. Um, particularly, we're really trying to bring in um, changing those don't do this, don't do that, all those sensational headlines that we all read that tell us all the horrible things that are happening with our, um, our children and our teens and technology and really like flip the switch to focus on the positive because there are amazing things that um, children and teens are doing right now to solve real problems in local, global, and digital communities around the world. And that's really what we want to inspire um, more communities to do. Wait a minute. I, I, I've never heard that before. There are positive things that kids can be doing with digital devices. Name yeah. one. Name one. Oh, my gosh. We've got so many. I mean, what we just did, too, about we've got students that are using technology uh, to amplify their voice, to solve real problems, and then, you know, really get their message out there, whether it's like they're connecting to the global goals. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, look at Greta, what Greta is doing about climate change. I mean, that... Um, that just is incredible. But there are, you know, students that are interested in making sure that, you know, representation matters. And so there are students that want to make sure, like, whether it's like a passion of theirs, reading, that I'm going to go out there and I'm going to do this, you know, uh, I'm going to share my voice to get more students to read. Um, mm -hmm. There are others that are doing things like there was a student in uh, Houston, Texas. It's one of my favorite stories. She did a project in her classroom about um, the bayous and that they're polluted. And the project ended and she just thought, I wanna do more, like my community deserves more. And so she started a change.org petition, mm -hmm. got enough signatures to have um, an appointment with the mayor to talk about have going um, plastic bag free. I mean, there are, I could go on and on about the amazing things that students are doing um, positively with social media. Yeah, there really are. There really is a lot of good news. And so now you're talking from Southern Utah. And so, uh, Derek, what do you do in Utah? So I'm actually a librarian of all things. I'm a, I'm a teacher librarian here in Southern Utah, and I work at an intermediate school of sixth and seventh grade students. And so I actually run a two week rotation within my library where one week they come in, they do book checkouts, standard library stuff, right? Literature, literature, literacy, really big there. The other, the second week they come in, and they're coming with a different teacher, with their social studies teacher. And I really focus on digital citizenship, media literacy, and really making sure that they're understanding like research skills, how, how to use the internet in, in good ways. And the fact that just because it's posted doesn't mean that, that there's truth there and how to really get down to the facts and say, okay, what is this? What is a good source? How do I know they're a good source? How would I know they're not a good source? And mm -hmm. so I do a lot of that kind of stuff, just, just what I'm doing in my day-to-day -day job. Yeah, that comes back to how do we help our our everyone, not just our students, how to consume and produce media. Exactly. Right. So you're now working together over these past few days in Southern Utah about girls in technology. What was that about? So it was a conference basically where there's a professor at SGU basically puts, brings, in, brings in girls, underprivileged girls in the area and gives them a chance to really look and see how can technology and, and how could that work in their lives in the sense that a lot of, I mean, a lot of tech companies are really looking to try to have more women in technology and really get them here and get them involved in what they're doing. Frankly, they, there needs to be a better, a better balance of, of men and women within that workforce. And so mm -hmm. he's really, her goal is to get them here to learn and say, well, what can I do in technology? What does that mean? You know, and it's not just sitting behind a computer and programming, which coding is huge, but there's lots of pieces besides just actual writing of the bits and the bytes of applications and software there's so many pieces and she really is trying to spotlight here are things that you can be doing if you are involved in technology and really trying to level leverage that like playing field for you know for all these girls uh -huh. and i actually met this professor two years ago at a conference mm -hmm. and um immediately i, I we knew we were going to collaborate mm -hmm. and so this is actually the second annual for 
um, this conference. I was not able to come to Utah last year. So Derek represented the Digital Citizenship Institute and did a session. And so this is, was our first time, you know, I was able to come this year um, so we could co-present. Mm -hmm. And this is actually the first time we've been in a lot of conferences, but we've never presented together. And it was really, it was a, gr a great opportunity. Very good. So what did you present? So we, we decided to take digital citizenship um, in collaboration with the global goals and um, with another layer using augmented reality, 3D Bear. And it was inspired after I saw that article about um, the Metro, the students that uh, went to the, to the Metro, I think that was in Finland. Right. And, and saw that it wasn't accessible for all and then redesigned the Metro to make it more accessible. And I thought, you know, digital citizenship to me is that those human connections. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't humanize the person next to you. Um, you're not gonna be able to apply that to people around the world that might look different or, or speak a different language or practice a different culture. If you can't do that, you can't apply um, the fact that the human being, those human connections online. And so let's, let's come up with a game plan where we ask these girls to identify a problem in a local, global, or digital community, something that mm -hmm. they're passionate about, and let's solve it, connecting them to the global goals, and then with that plan in mind, use 3D Bear um, to visually capture, you know, what that might look like in action. So how excited were these kids at being asked to make recommendations for adults? That must have been, you must have been about the first people who really asked them, hey, you know something, I'm treating you like an adult, tell me how you would change this. Well, so we actually started with, with the idea and we said, how many of you have had adults tell you what, what you do online is not real, it's not real life? And every hand is up and they're just like nodding their heads like, yeah, I, I, every day. And, we, and that was kind of where, where the digital citizenship part came. We said, look, we get that. But online physical life and digital life are both real. I don't like the term real world and online world. I always say physical world or 3D world and then the, the digital world, so kind of how I always put it. Mm -hmm. and, and, that's, and that's really important. These girls, they had never, I don't, I, don't think, I don't think any of them had ever thought about that way. And bringing that up, kind of like, okay, wow, okay, really? And we point out the fact that you can make changes. And we used a couple of different examples throughout our presentation. And something's very, very small. I, like the fact that I mentioned, you know, have you ever received a text message when you felt really terrible? And that one little message cheered you up. That's not a hard thing to send a text message. Mm -hmm. the hard part is getting it right when the person needs it. We don't know how that's going to be, but the act of sending a text is not hard. And, right. and but yet that is technology. Mm -hmm. Frankly, writing somebody a note, that's technology. It's low tech when you're talking about writing them a handwritten note. But frankly, sometimes that's the most valuable because of how it is. And so helping them to see this technology can literally change their life and others mm -hmm. and want you to talk to us and share your thoughts you're just as valuable as anybody else in this building what do you think you know wow. in the beginning they were silent because we asked like that big rhetorical question about like what is it that you would like to change or mm -hmm. have you to change or how are you doing this right now and it was crickets like like no I, I, no one's asked me this i don't know how to answer that and so we use that example about that everyone is actually already doing this in some sort of way mm -hmm. and um and then we did we showed some examples um of you know you asked that question when we first kicked this off about you know students that are already we used really positive examples and then just to kind of continue oh i that i could i do something like that one we did we showed this intergenerational with cyber seniors mm -hmm. and and um it was a fabulous and it's like that idea of learning side by side and right. that Learning is a two-way street, mm -hmm. and we all have something to learn from, you know, each other. So mm -hmm. I think the beginning, they were really surprised that we oh, were yeah. asking them. 100%. And then it continued to evolve. So what was the project this time? <laughs> well, so we, we kept it, we actually kept it quite open. We said, okay, think about what you are dealing with, because frankly, we had, we had girls there from all over the country, people that... That were that were there in Southern Utah going to school that weren't they don't know that they, they didn't listen to live in Southern Utah but they were there for school purposes and so it, we can't really we couldn't really say we want you to do X Y or Z 
But we, we basically said, here are the global goals. We shared some examples and said, think of something you could be doing. How mm-hmm. could you affect the change? And then at this point, and, and, we, and then we demonstrated the 3D Bear app and frankly walked through it and, and, and told them, you have an account. Let's kind of work through this. And a number of them, before the end, were already like, okay, I'm, I'm logging in here. How, how do I log in? Make sure they were ready to go. Our biggest problem we had, though, is that our time limit was 40 minutes. Actually, I'm going to stop one second. I want to share something on my screen. Okay. Um, I'm going to, because I think, so, you, you know, when you were talking about the global goals, okay, so you see that right now, the global goals for sustainable development. So these are the 17 goals that are shared around the world for how we should be building, well, our earth. You know, what should we be doing on earth to make sure that earth is sustainable and that we all do well? So there's these 17 different goals. And basically you, what I'm understanding is you went through the, with the girls and you said, okay, pick one of these areas where you feel you, you should be able to make a difference and then demo this in augmented reality how you would go about it is that is that a fair exactly exactly and then one of the examples just so that you can see i think it's um down there on slide eight um is our favorite classroom in scotland it's my uh, it's it's the example i always use it's It's a video um i'm I'm, i don't know that showing a video but yes so that you know Mm -hmm. um it's ellie primary one on twitter they're four and five year olds. And, um, you know, the message that we try when we use that example was if four and five year olds can do it, we all can do it. And, you know, I reminded them if they you didn't remember when you were four and five, you were learning your math facts. You were also learning about your community. And Ellie Primary One in Scotland, um, they learned that homelessness was a major issue in Glasgow. And so um, alongside their teacher, the teacher said while they were um, memorizing their math facts, Um, how about if we put out there on social media, does anybody want to sponsor us to memorize our math facts and whatever money that we, we bring in, we will donate a toilet to the community. And not only were they able to donate, they, they, they not only got one toilet, they got enough funds for four toilets and that's really making an impact in your community. So we felt like that example, particularly. And and I won't even use the pun that I could have come up with for that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, well, that example really does connect back to those yeah. goals. And now well, I feel like what we were doing, I don't know if in planning this session, I knew what the outcome was going to look like, but yeah. I was comfortable enough to say, because now we're like modeling what it means to be a learner before anything else. Mm-hmm. But we took that example from Scotland mm-hmm. and now we added 3D Bear and then we were coming up with a solution for our community. What might that look like? Yeah. You know? So, and how much time, I mean, I, how much time would you have wanted for that activity? Well, so we got through all of the kind of the, the pre, the, we, 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 we had to set a foundation, really. We had to go through what are these global goals? What's going on? We, had, we took about 20 minutes, 25 minutes to go through all of those, so that foundation without rushing it. So we had about five, 10 minutes to kind of, kind of uh, demo 3D Bear. And I think if we had even an, an, an extra 15 to 20 more minutes, I think really they could have gotten a start. Now, this, this could have been an all-day, a half-day project, an all-day project. I mean, really kind of getting in there because you, they, you might have want them to kind of go in and do some research and some background on what they're looking for. But even with 20 more minutes, 15, 20 minutes, we would have been fine. I think we could have had a good and, start. And our other um, roadblock was that the majority did not have mobile devices. Um, and that made it – but. I still, you know, they were very excited that they, they, they understood before they left how they were going to get back in here, Mm -hmm. um, into their account, into the classroom that we had, you know, set Mm -hmm. up and we invite, we really, I felt like the message we kept sending was that this is an invitation to become part of this like army of awesome kids doing awesome things, using Mm -hmm. tech for good. And just like the examples that we shared of these amazing students, we want to share and highlight and spotlight, you know, and cheer as loud as we can for, for what they would create um, mm-hmm. when we go to other places. Yeah. And then we're also doing an online, um, we're, we're hosting our fifth annual Digit Summit online during mm-hmm. Digit Week. And so I, you know, I said that I would really like, because the professor 
um, is going to continue to work with these girls. And I really hope they take this invitation so mm -hmm. that at ISTE, I can present some of this work. But no matter what, I said another invitation is in October during Dig Sit Week, you might want to be one of our student presenters on this exact topic. Yeah. So I really, I, I feel like after um, we did the three sessions, we had lunch and then we were all like in one big room. Um, I guess it would be like a vendor sort of setup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the girls came to us and were asking and making sure that they were all ready to continue this project. Well, it seems to me, you, you, in terms of devices, not every kid needs a device. I mean, if, if you had one device for every three or four girls, because they're going to work in teams, and the, the real work is the brainstorming, figuring out what the problem is, what is the solution, how is this going to work, and then the 3D bear part is really the icing on the cake, right? Right. Yeah, well, and, and the thing is, too, we have to realize, there were 150 girls at this camp, at this wow. event, we only saw about... 50 of them. We saw a third of these girls, maybe. And which, while that's a great thing, it was purposely, purposely set up that way. So the after the lunch portion was kind of a vendor hall. And so we saw a lot of girls said, hey, I didn't get to come to you. What, what are you guys talking about? What is this? And so we were able to get even a few more involved and interested. And so it was a, it's a great idea for a camp. And I, and I love what was going on with it. But really, we, didn't even, we barely scratched the surface because of the, the time commitments that were involved there. And we, we could have gone much longer, but. So next year, I mean, this year you had 45 minute sessions, but next year, what do you think? Yeah, yeah the, um, the professor had said, you know, oh, I'd like you to be in a workshop, you know, you not, just from the feedback that she had already received from these girls, uh -huh. um, because, you know, with a, we, mm -hmm. and I would love to have a workshop session, but, you know, even though it might not have, you know, we didn't have uh, a, a, a definite end or a product was mm -hmm. what we did. I am so excited. Like this is something, this proposal is something I want to put in to other conferences because it has such great potential. I think so. I think it's really cool. Okay. So, you know, we've been going for quite a while, so I don't want to um, make people watch too long a video. Okay. What's one thought that you would want to close off with? Oh, I, well, I think that it's about making an impact in your community mm -hmm. and it ties back, you know, that local, global and digital. And we talked about it um, specifically with the girls yesterday, that when you make an impact in your community, it's like skipping stones in a ripple effect. And, you know, if we could think of that local, global and digital, like as one entity, you know, mm -hmm are one world and one human race mm -hmm. and you know th this is on all of us and all it takes is one person to stand up and make a difference and our big invitation was we wanted these girls to be that one because then one becomes many wow. I think that was really the the big message yesterday and Derek from you and the only thing I would add to that I mean really that was kind of the, the big piece but also sometimes we get into these things and we think we have to have some big grandiose idea you know, to change the world, it's got to be big, it's got to be massive. You know what? Being kind and being appreciative to one individual person can literally change the world for that one person. You don't even know how it's going to be. And so this, this project, no matter how big or small these girls take it or your students take this, it can literally change the world. Maybe not for every single person, but for some people, for mm -hmm. that person, their world could be changed massively. You know, and, and sometimes we've got to, we can't, we, we can't just go for the big giant things. Remember, mm -hmm. start small and that's, that's okay. One grain at a time. That's right. Well, uh, first of all, I just want to say what a privilege it is to be able to talk with the two of you. Um, the thing, you know, what you're doing to inspire kids to really want to, you know, to really be better for themselves and to be better for the world is really incredible. So thank you very much. Thanks so much for your time. And now I have to figure out how to...